Oh, whoa. That was... I just check that. There it is. Do it. Do it. I can't hit the button. Wait, Do wait. it. Why? Oh, the button malfunctioned. All right, all right. We need to make up. We need to make up for it. Bop, boom, doo, ba, da, ooh, Oh wait. Good job, garbage bot. All right, we're back. Uh, hi, hi. Uh, welcome back. Hey, I've uh, I got a song for hour two. Craig, what's your, song for, what's your song for hour two? How does oh, it go? It goes like this. Uh, uh, hold on, I need, I need to turn my speakers on because I can't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really good at this, honestly. Yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> okay. It's. Hour two of Garbage Day and statues are very sexy. I'm sure the whole thing's quite erotic and not the slightest bit quixotic. We've got 23 more hours to go of this exhausting day-long show. We're all gonna die. It's Garbage Day. Yay! Cha-cha-cha. Yay! <laughs> Thank you, Boots. All right. Oh, wow. Uh, it looks like the whole next doc is just Boots playing the piano. <laughs> as well. Uh, yeah, we are in hour two of 24 terrible hours. Uh, with me again, we've got Boots Rangear, myself, we've got Frank West, we've got Isfahan, we've got Nutshell Gula, we've got Sog, and once again, on the uh, Windows XP machine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh! We also have we also have Victor Laszlo. Say hello, Victor. Say hello, Victor. Hello? Um, he, Victor, uh, Victor, wake up! <laughs> wake up! Victor. Why don't, why? <laughs> <laughs> okay, there He's you are. In and out. No. <laughs> no, wake up, Victor! You gotta wake up. Perhaps. Thanks, dog. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing a podcast. We need you to stay awake. Yep, actual no. actual Victor Laszlo, and not yep. a pre-recorded soundboard. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I agree. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so yeah. So this is uh, hour two of our twenty-four terrible hours. Once again, we are donating. Uh, we are raising money for the Southern Poverty Law Center. Uh, you can go to Garbage Live right now uh, and donate. Uh, the top donator for every hour will get mailed to their home address uh, a brand new fetish. Um, which is very exciting. Uh, our two uh, is a document provided by the Heavenator and Lisbiathon. Uh, <laughs> that that uh, that that document is called "Statues Are Sexy." Uh, <laughs> Hell yeah! The full just... title is the full title is "Statues Are Sexy." No, wait, come back. <laughs> nice. Um, I just want uh, to say we have we have uh, several Heavenator and Lisbiathon uh, documents ahead of us, and they're all in that arrangement. So I don't know what that says about documents that are, are that are from the Lisbiathan and Heavenator. They seem to be a problem. I just just saying. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Boots, you're taking this one. So uh, tell me about statues, won't you? Yeah. Uh, this is documents called "Statues Are Sexy." No, wait, come back. <laughs> um, and the note from uh, from the Heavenator says, "So this is gross. Real dolls, statues, and robots. Real creepo depot." <laughs> a lot of the selections are long but ever anyway let's buy a thon gives an extra note says seriously this is gross so yeah yay <laughs> um so we're going to start with uh the forward copyright and disclaimer naturally oh, <laughs> um it's fine would That's you like the to... wrong forward <laughs> uh that is the wrong forward backwards <laughs> um it's do you want to take that sure <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a page called www.asfr.com, ASMR, and on this page was an FAQ about the rather unique form of erotica there to do with sexy robots, one I contributed under, under the name, that email address. Mm -hmm. And the page unexpectedly flourished, and there was much happy mechanical hedonistic fantasy. And the people later. Later, the author of ASFR.com found that real life's demands prohibited him from updating his much-beloved page. 
New stories happened less and less. Related pages like the Hall of Statuary and the Mannequin Lover's homepage disappeared. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> www.asfr.com went dark and a great silent mechanical wailing was heard. <laughs> a wonderful thing happened then, as is usually the case in these stories when they look to be their blackest. <laughs> Why is this so purple? <laughs> The people who visited these once pages came up with pages of their own. People that looked at those pages came up with pages of their own. The genre overlapped with other closely related ones, and the limits were explored and pushed, and the community has grown. And though in this day some of those newer pages have come and gone, the concept is still going strong. Was this written by Robert Jordan? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The document is tens of thousands of pages long. <laughs> Even Carl WW F. plunging neckline? Nope, nope, not him. <laughs> <laughs> Even www.asfr.com has come back online in a newer. But the venerable ASFR FAQ, mm, as penned by Robot Doll, seemed to fall by the wayside. As of this writing, it was a difficult thing to find. It wasn't updated in what seemed like forever. And apart from a few books on erotic hypnosis and an essay by Simon Barr Sinister, there really was no FAQ for the mind control people. <laughs> and at this point, I re-enter the story. Good, this good, because we, we were all about to kill ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> this FAQ is an attempt to provide a more current and inclusive coverage of all the things ASFR has grown into and crosses over with. It should be considered by no means complete. And submissions are certainly always welcome, and you'll be credited if you are okay with such. Comments and flames will be read and considered according to their merit. Well, this is um, okay. It's a flame meritocracy. Yeah. Only the best flames get through. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I com combining concepts of technosexuality, Pygmalionism, and mind control all in one FAQ? Because mm. I want to. Shut up already. Kidding. Actually. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Got you there for a second, huh? Actually, there is so much overlap between the three that I didn't want to write three separate FAQs because they can seem so interlaced and refer to each other so much in my own descriptions. I thought it better to have it all in one big file than three little files you might not be able to find all of at once later on. This fact is copyright by that guy. It's name 2002 to 2003. All rights reserved. This document is not to be sold or distributed for profit without permission. By continuing to read this document, you agree to absolve the author of our responsibility for personal, professional situations or mental states arising from your continued reading. You also undertake not to not prosecute the author for any reason whatsoever. Except for <laughs> All right, thank you. Our copyright by Robert You have to tell the author if you're a cop. It's the law. Yeah. A robot cop. Okay, so now, now we have a... Boy, a better understanding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> an irritating well, history. We've of this. only read part one of a, a what forty part series. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, Robert Jordan. It's... Yeah, <laughs> um, Lemon. The, we're we're going to move on to an FAQ section, and the and the uh, the answer the question that you're going to answer is yeah. wait, wait, wait. Yeah. You want to have sex with a robot? All right. <laughs> yeah, we're, at, we're, at, we're at section one point three, which means we're finally out of beta. Um, there is a question you may never get to answer the, the same answer to twice. For my own part, yes and no. <laughs> God damn it. Do I look like, do I look at that old robot on Lost in Space waving its ten tentacular arms around and get all hot and bothered? No, not hardly. Now, Says you. When I look at an image of a polished chrome and flesh woman as painted as... This Hajima is... Soriyama or Jerry Ryan playing the infamous Borg Seven of Nine on Star Trek Voyager. You better believe it, gentle reader. He probably also calls like the people who are attracted to the Lost in Space robot perverts or something. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are weird. They're How ruining our reputation. You. Am I indicative of the general mindset? Who knows? Different concepts float different people's boats. The idea of a person opening some access panel and showing circuitry and hydraulics underneath is enough to set some of us on fire. <laughs> For some, it's seeing the supposed mechanical person damage or malfunctioning in some robotic way. Some people only want the implication that the mechanical woman of their dreams is an artificial life form. Seeing 
seeming completely human in every way, as in the Stepford Wives, Austin Powers, or the Terminator. Aren't the Stepford Wives actual women, though? They're not robots. Uh, don't ruin robots. that movie for me. Uh, okay, in the know. original, they're robots. Oh. <laughs> they're made by they're made by some of the guys that do the animatronics at Disney in the novel. So think about oh, that God. when you're okay. Oh, well, now it's a lot. Now it's a lot clearer why they've latched onto that movie. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, the other extreme may be the streamlined, jet-aged, art deco look of Rothwang's Hell Robot in Metropolis, a completely inhuman but stylized and sexually identified machine. And for still others, it's seeing said mechanical person powered up or running down. For some, the desired being may not have a physical form, existing as artificial sentient code in a computer mainframe. Hell yeah! <laughs> That that uh, that super racist Microsoft Twitter bot. <laughs> <laughs> I want to fuck the machine bride of Pinbot. Ooh, Ooh. very nice. Mm -hmm. um, well, hello there. I see you're trying to jack yourself off. Would you like some help with that? <laughs> <laughs> Place your dick into the server. Go farm. away, Clippy. Get out of my reefer, Clippy. Um, this conversation, whether consensual or not. Uh, in uh, into a machine is all some people need. Some need it to be very consensual. It crosses into rape fantasy. Others need it to be really non-consensual. Or what's the point? Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, dear. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> For some, consensuality never enters the picture since robots don't think or feel but simply perform their program tasks. For others, it's the idea of consensuality never enters the picture because hypnosis is a mental state that that by its very nature is consensual. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Your Honor. <sighs> <laughs> oh, boy. Let's just look at Portex's drawing for a minute of, of a sentient uh, Squidward's house. <laughs> hey, Portex, draw, draw like a Vic Viper from Gradius shooting at it. <laughs> For some, the fantasy is strictly a fantasy only, the reality of which would never satisfy. For others, it's the other extreme being an ideal that they would strive to achieve if given a chance, either in having the companionship of an artificial lover or to actually become artificial themselves. And for still others, wow, it's a complicated Venn diagram. Yeah. It's a chance to indulge in erotic role play and a rather specialized form of dominance and submission play. <laughs> The Venn diagram looks like a chrysanthemum at this point. Uh. <laughs> For some, it's a chance to indulge in some arousing escapism by dressing the part in costume play or acting robotically. <laughs> you know, like that 80s uh, sitcom, Small Wonder. Uh. As, as uh. many variances and combinations of those differences as you might expect to find in more mainstream erotic genres, my sentence is making no sense, and communities, you'll find just as many techno-sexuality which is uh, the newest Skinny Puppy album, and its related cousins. <laughs> the idea seems to be that on some level, mentally or physically, the person or object of desire is artificial and programmable. That's the only real constant. After that, all bets are off. <laughs> all right. Oh, so, <laughs> um, so now we're going to just move down to, uh, to question number 1.5 uh, in the FAQ, which is... Uh, like that itself is probably long enough for the rest of this hour if we wanted to go sure. through it. And this uh, this question asks, uh, so what should I look for in a good technosexual fantasy? A robot? Yeah, but there's different features. There's a different yeah. things. So there's like the Why are there any more words? Yeah, so there's it's in separate sections. There's the startup and shutdown section. There's the voice. Um, but I want to look at the mental state. Oh, I... So don't. Frank West... <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> teach you to express your thoughts on the topic. Uh, tell us this what we should be wait. looking for in the mental state of a of a technosexual fantasy. There's an inherent submissive or dominant quality to the robotic. Uh, All too seldom are the instances in which the mental state is like that of your everyday Dick or Jane. The idea that the mindset of the controlled can be made to fit that of a fantasy lover is seductive and very close to that of the mind controller genre. Is it though? Instances and clues. In the second Robocop movie, the cyborg Alex Murphy. 
is controlled. By... Oh my god, sexy Robocop though. So sexy Robocop. Oh yeah. I'm sorry, I was just overcome. Uh, the cyborg Alex Murphy is controlled by prime directives in his operating system that prevent him from acting out on his own in certain instances. There's even a scene where a lovely computer scientist has Murphy connected to her computer terminal, typing his thoughts on, on the fly, programming him to believe he's very lucky not to have to think for himself. Murphy oh, repeating God. the words as she types them. Okay. Uh-huh. In early and defining fiction pieces by the authors, Robot Doll and RC, <laughs> there are, you know, those classics. There are instances of robot women assuming a dominant position, using implanted or installed technology to seduce, hypnotize, and program people into robot-like positions of servitude. People who become the perfect servant for the one they wish to serve. In this instance, the controller becomes the ever-so-deliciously controlled. <laughs> yep. I'm not, um, I'm not sensing much uh, editorial impartiality here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, well, hey, hey, nutshell. Yes. Um, I'd like to to get like a woman's opinion. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, I can give you that. <laughs> <laughs> this is fine. Wait, dead or alive? You're coming what? with me. That's the joke I was looking okay, for. Okay. So, so question number one point seven is so level with me. Are there women actually into this? <laughs> <laughs> Man, there's so uh, many words to answer this question. <laughs> Just no and lean on the O key. <laughs> Believe it or not, yes, there are. Friends and neighbors, I kid you not. We men folk. Uh, we men folk probably are not <laughs> yeah. 10 to 1 oh, in the yeah. online world. Half the women you meet in chats are likely men. Some women that post are even assumed to be men out of hand, as is the case with a favorite technosexual slash mind control author and artist I'm quite a fan of. And women that lurk without posting sometimes never reveal their actual gender. And it gives some of us fits. <laughs> We're entitled to know what gender everybody is. I totally heard that as women that lurk without pussy sometimes. <laughs> I just want to know if you have a penis or not. <laughs> it's an understandable situation, however. Women online today tend to get pounced on immediately by any man that may perceive them to have even a vaguely female sound on my name. Sometimes to the degree that some women will post on her male identity out of sheer self-defense. <laughs> It happens to me all the time. More than likely, before someone has the common decency to try and chat you up, they're asking you in abbreviated terms, A-S-L-O-H, sex location. Oh, thank you. Thank you. This is America Online in 1990. <laughs> Jeez, I don't even write a hello. Sound familiar, ladies? Every time you've ever been propositioned eight times in a night and wish these guys knew what it was like, it's very likely your average technosexual Pygmalionist or mind controller will know your pain and understand what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. At least some of them will have been there and have the lousy t-shirt to prove it. So Wait, talk to what? them and not those other guys. Wait, like why why do all the men on this in this community just assume that in a forum built around female sexual robots that every female would be a sexual robot. That's so confusing. I don't know, man. I'm just reading the document. <laughs> <laughs> now, Charles, is that what men sound like to you? <laughs> <laughs> if so, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, some of them? <laughs> hurtful. Just hurtful. <laughs> Uh, it's it's not all of us sound like that, okay? <laughs> Only some of us sound like that. Uh, truly, Ann Cat suggests. I think that's just her boots voice. It's kind of flattering, that actually. That was, that was a good, good boots voice. <laughs> My God, this drawing! You should donate more. You're getting to look at this drawing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, let's move out of the 1.x uh, categories of technosexuality, and let's move into dollars. That's uh, 
D O L L E R S. Oh, okay. Oh no. Ones who doll. This is worse than this is worse than capitalism now. Yeah, yeah no it is. Dollar sign in dollars. And so, uh, so Stug, uh, question two point is what's this about toys, dollies, and wind ups? Yes, sure. I will tell you. Okay, okay. I hear you saying. I can sort of understand about the robots thing, but there are people out there that are sexually excited by toy dolls. Well, I'm glad you asked me that too. <laughs> there is a section of the community completely oh, so and actively bad. devoted to this idea. It sort of falls between the gray area of technosexuals and Pygmalionists, so it gets its own section between the two. There is a way gentle side to the whole robot and statue thing that manifests itself in the dollar community. So wait, Keep... so Pygmalionists would be like the kind of like Henry Higgins sort of people that could guess what clean no, room built your no. circuitry? They're, they're, uh, they're statue fuckers, Lemon. Oh, okay. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was a fucking statue right now. <laughs> so I didn't have to read this. <laughs> People here tend to be more sexually aroused by the idea of living doll, toy, stuffier, wind-up automaton, or actually being one, or being transformed into one. Among dollars, some of the big attractions seem to be imagery, assuming the role, dressing the part, and some very nice play. It can have its dark side, like anything can. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, That's... mime boobs. Yeah, that's 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 a that's a fucking fantastic sentence. Everything can have its dark side. Great. But for the most part, this one's a very bright and happy part of the whole. Here's where you can find a lot more find a lot of the more cartoon and Japanese animation based ideas as well as some overlap with all the other areas to do with this FAQ. Yeah, Japanese from Japan. <laughs> As well, it ventures into the territory of costume play, age play, alternative fashion styles, student uniforms, both Western and Japanese. Some fashions are even geared towards a sort of doll-like look referred to as gothic Lolita. Ew. Okay, bye-bye. Bye, stop. Eject. Eject. <laughs> it needs, need, like, the soundboard effect of, like, uh, footsteps fading out in the distance. <laughs> well, maybe this one will work. No, right. wait, there's a delay. Yeah. Super dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Action. yeah, so, so Isfahan, you're going to read uh, the answer to question 2.5, which is, so this isn't about real sex dolls you could just go out and buy right now? <laughs> well, I mentioned them before to an extensive degree in section 1.95. Sex dolls are far from just the somewhat woman-shaped polyethylene balloons you remember from so many cliches. You know, the ones that look nothing like the picture of the porn starlet on the box. They've evolved about as far from that as humans have from the rhesus monkeys. Similar animals in that way may have the same number of limbs, entirely different species. Back in 1995 or 1996, a company called Abyss Productions who specialized in creating prosthetics and movie special effects people had the idea that they could make an entirely realistic sex doll using a solid construction with an articulate skeleton and silicone rubber based on molds from real women and sculpted parts. The results are enough to make any person into dolls or realistic yet artificial looking women that you could actually have ahem relations with fall oh, off thank their you fall off their computer chair they're called real dolls okay 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 you're you're writing a but you're writing a fact about like sentient fuck dolls but ahem relations <laughs> and abyss seems to have really taken off since then with customizable face body type combinations uh -huh. And they even make males or any combination of the two sexes they can realistically combine. And if the nice people at Abyss Productions want to donate one in order that I can get more first-hand information about them in exchange for this inadvertent plug, do get in touch. Man, Since where then, are you where you're begging for sex dolls online? Like, where are you in your life? <laughs> Honestly, fresh out of sex dolls. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. You, you don't have a sex doll. That's the problem. 
Since then, there are other companies out there that make products along the same line. Some have vibrating implants. Some are based on live casts from famous porn stars. Some actually have rudimentary sensor networks in them that can be connected to your PC. Touch her here and listen to your PC speak in her voice how much she likes it when you do. Ugh. Indeed, we're not talking toys for tots. These dolls are adults only, especially when you look at the price, which usually starts in excess of $4,000 or $5,000 US. Shit. You can have this or you can have a high range gaming machine. Which is it? Hmm, well, actually, if you put it that way. <laughs> can, can I play Skyrim on the sex doll? I mean, which is, which is less embarrassing if a girl comes over? Listen, I'm just going to say, I, I, like, I really like this. There's so many, like, erotic images that are in these documents. Yeah, um, like what? Uh, like this one, which you guys are going to see in, like, a minute. Oh, it's very, mine, it's mine very boobs. small. Mine boobs. <laughs> There's mine boobs. But, yeah, let's look at this hot, hot I don't know, I'm just looking at Portax's robot clamp sex drawing, from, and that really makes me... From Get <laughs> Smart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that I love tough. the chattery oh. teeth. That's great. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, the, and the the wind up kind of acts like its eyes. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna we're gonna move on to section three now. Mm -hmm. I don't. I haven't looked far enough down in the document to know how many sections there are of this, and whether okay. it just it just continues to be. Just ex more explaining of what this thing is. Uh, but section three is Pygmalionists, and I'm going to read uh, 3.4, which is, so this is just, so this is a real thing, not just an internet fantasy? That's a question we ask every time. Parsing. Stand by. Is this Parsing. Yeah. Stand by. Oh, yes. Very much so. In recent years, the infamous Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue featured its models body painted like living statues. There are people out there making videos for sale to Pygmalionists. People are doing it in their bedrooms with lovers and significant others. People are exploring it with the use of hypnotic suggestion. Hey, honey, could you stand over there in an awkward pose for an hour while I pretend you're a statue? <laughs> It shows up more. It shows up in our mainstream media more and more in shows like Charmed or Buffy or Smallville or Star Trek or The Twilight Zone. God damn, the WB has a lot to answer for. <laughs> that is the uh, agreed. Presumably, if this was written like 10 years later, or in Supernatural and in the second season of Supernatural. <laughs> in the third season of Supernatural. Yeah. It's been around since the time of ancient Greek myth folks. No, oh sorry, no, there aren't people really being frozen or turned to stone, precious gems, plastic, or precious metals. But oh, I doubt but I doubt the idea will be going away anytime soon. Again, trust the rose on this one. Among should I, Okay. Should yep. I get a kiss from it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Only if you're standing stock still. There's, so, so, so like a joke that just stops all conversation. Oh, wait. Oh, come on. Oh, I think your server broke. Yeah, I think it did. Oh, no. Oh, I don't know how that no. happened. Oh, <laughs> right. no. Okay. Uh, the, the, here, Levin, take over. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, shit. Okay, so, uh, so that was uh, section 3.4. Uh, and we are now going to move into uh, a section called Let's Think About My Boner. <laughs> Is it a uh, robot boner? Let's think about my boner. Um, All the live long day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a statement. Um, uh, don't worry, we will get to the story. There's just something I wanted to get off my chest. <laughs> Crickets. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> A little late there, Victor, but we appreciate you being here for real. <laughs> Uh, I've seen a lot of stories on the World Wide Web. People put in a lot of effort. Then they put them up on their own site or somebody else's, and then they get to look like this. You mean like what? Well, gray, for instance. White would cost the same and looks much better. Even better than a background bitmap. 
Oh, uh, Frank West, uh, just we're going to have a conversation back and forth, won't we? Oh, are we? Let's yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we're at a statement, uh, and uh, yes. you, me you mean those. Oh, you mean like what? Well, gray, for instance. White would cost the same and look much better, even better than a background bitmap. You mean those that are so dark that you wonder if there's any text on it at all? <laughs> right. Or those that make you go seasick because you can see the letters but can't read them. The background is imaginative, very avant-garde, <laughs> and are all dots and little scribbles like poor Texas drawings. <laughs> <laughs> so people better not mess with the backgrounds. Not if they know what they are doing. And there is one other thing. Which is? Every time someone says something, a new paragraph starts. The words get floating all over the place. Look at any novel and tell me, do they do that in books? Yes, they do. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, do they not though? E not even in cheap ones. <laughs> yeah. It it is. See? To do See? With, the, with the P and the BR, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. Off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're talking HTML markup now. Oh, right. God. E.g., try using Shift Enter in Netscape <laughs> if you want to get a line break instead of a paragraph. So break. you're writing HTML in Netscape <laughs> when you're submitting stories. <laughs> this, this hasn't dated itself at all. <laughs> you're actually the next line, too, Lemon, because. Oh, formatting. well, yeah, I just, <laughs> I'm talking about paragraph formatting and then I fucked up my paragraph formatting. <laughs> God damn me. And forget about using this, which makes the text drop off the page and looks very corny indeed. I hate Courier anyway. Can we get on now? Yes. I just wanted to ask, the, do those stories on the web have to look so bloody awful? <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, Boots is doing something. So no, uh, it's, we're, we're good. Okay, great. It's fixed for now. Okay. Mm. Okay. So uh, now let's uh, let's take a look at the living dollhouse. Oh, boy. Uh, the that... living mannequin. Come on, man, this is gross enough without Joss Whedon in it. <laughs> the living... <laughs> nice. the, this is called the living dollhouse. The living mannequin shop window. Shit. Um, and there appears to be. I don't know, maybe camera two and camera one are characters. <laughs> oh, then, there's, yeah. then there's some like dialogue or something. So, uh, so Stog, you're camera two. I'm camera two, yeah. Uh, Frank West, you're the first person talking here. Uh, nutshell, you're the, the, alter you're the okay. alternating uh, dialogue, perhaps. Man, and, and <laughs> I see why we had to explain how formatting works. That's, that's a real good script. Why do the stories have to look so crappy? Now then, read one of my stories. I don't even know what I'm supposed to be. Uh, the living mannequin shop window. Oh, okay. Does it your own not work? You're the second person in quotes. Yeah. I'm and then. Uh, okay. Okay. And then, okay. Uh, wait, okay. Isfahan's camera one. Is that right? Uh, sure. Yeah. I I'm just it. like I'm just like the stage direction. Uh, perhaps Maybe. I don't know why we start with camera one, camera two, and then move to camera yeah. one. That seems <laughs> seems like a strange camera way of two, doing camera things. Camera one, and then narrator without a camera. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll be the narrator, the narrator without a camera. Not supposed to have a camera. <laughs> cool. Okay. okay, take it away, Stog. Camera two. <clears throat> camera two the girl peeks around the main door that in the two centuries of its existence seems to have grown thicker like a tree wow i'm really wordy for a camera <laughs> <laughs> it must be creaking she slips in throws a casual glance at the reception desk and moves on through the hallway there is no one at the desk shall i no let her she seems to know where she is going she does she has been here before Camera one. <laughs> on through the hallway, she has no regard for the marble tiles, the 16th century Chinese vases, and the gilded Baroque table that was swapped for an entire village once, or even the glorious garden outside the elegant French windows. She does see the mirror, but not because of its Venetian glass. She must be one of those women who cannot pass a mirror without checking her hair, her without checking their hair, their face, their clothes. She looks and looks without adjusting much of her appearance. She takes her time. Shall I go down now? She must be waiting. She is not waiting. She is enjoying herself. Mm, why? Why though? Why? Mm. What is enjoyable? After almost a I minute. mean, we talked about the 
two thousand year history of a door that we somehow know about, <laughs> but we couldn't talk about why the lady is enjoying herself. Oh no, that actually does track. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Women are mysterious and unfathomable, unlike doors. <laughs> <laughs> After almost a minute, she moves on, yet she does not walk. She moves. She moves to the big door to the right at the end of the corridor. She presses her ear against the wood, listens. She bows and tries to peep through the keyhole, awkwardly balancing her high, high heels. Her black sweater and the little mini skirt are stretched to their limits by the curves of her body. Although you could call her slim, <laughs> is she happy at what she sees? Uh... Her heavy black hair has fallen across her eyes. She returns to the mirror, only to comb her curls this time. She listens at the door one more time, then enters. The end? <laughs> that was riveting. Oh, enters is a hyperlink to the rest of the... To the, a story that starts with camera two, goes to camera one, and then goes to camera four. It's, <laughs> no, it's a hyperlink to the middle of that story, though. We've been had. We've been tricked. There's more of this. If only... <laughs> If only I had a robot that could teach me how to count. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to move on to the two types of androids. I don't know if it's story or I don't know what I, any, this, I don't know what any of the site is. I think <laughs> I don't know uh, because because this section is called "Let's Think About My Boner." The next section is called "Sexy <laughs> Stories." <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so Frank West, start telling us about two types of androids. Two types of androids. It seems there are two broad classes of things people here think under the name of android or gynoid, and I'm going to try giving them more specific names and see if they catch on. One toolbot. A machine and designed exp bleh, a machine designed and built to satisfy some human desires, whatever those may be: service, sex, companionship, caretaking. The machine will be designed to look and behave enough like a human being to satisfy those desires as well as possible, given technological constraints. Examples: Star Trek's Andrea, my Nicole and Catherine Candy. Oh early Asimov robots. If you want to know, you can click on all those. They're links. We're not going to. Uh, two, person bot. A person that happens to be made of artificial components and may or may not have been built by humans, but with a personality and capabilities that nobody deliberately gave it. For example, Data, Nova, Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah, Frankenstein's a robot. He's made of artificial components. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I can't help but notice that the tools are all women and the ones that are people are all men. That's, that's just a coincidence. Interesting. What in the world? <laughs> look, 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 it's, uh, it's, very, it's very obvious because two is called person bot. <laughs> so those are men. Yeah. <laughs> and the other one is called tool bot. Right. Oh, sure. <laughs> It makes sense to me to think of the two differently. I would think of a toolbot as a tool, duh, a toy, or a slave. But I would be hesitant to think of a person bot as such. Hmm. I wonder why that is. Well, the distinction between person bot and tool bot lies largely in its origin. The reason it was built and the relationship it bears to its design. It may be arbitrarily difficult to look at an existing android and its behavior, and determine which category it's in without knowing how it got the way that it is. So I like, have a, I have a very specific moral code, and I have not considered it at all ever. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, speaking of moral codes and things I've considered, Shit. there seems to be a cultural idea that a toolbot might, or even probably would, grow into a person bot. Oh, cool! <laughs> oh boy! <TV> stories <laughs> so for it. Good. Link to new site pending. But I've never found that very compelling. If I were designing a toolbot, I'd want to make very sure I couldn't become a person bot. Uh, I don't want my oh. tool to turn into a person. Either on a practical level, it should do what I want it to do, not what it wants to. Or a moral one. I don't want to feel like... Uh, 
I don't, yeah. want, <laughs> I don't want to feel like I should set it free when I spend time or money and I'm getting value from it. Gross! <laughs> I don't want it shattering any it. expensive and glass. That's why I should pay up. alimony or child support. <laughs> <laughs> Really it doesn't make sense to pay right child support. You know what? <laughs> Glass ceilings are expensive, and when they go berserk and shatter them, I have to replace them. <laughs> well, Victor, just be thankful you don't have to read any of this. <laughs> uh, there also seems to be an idea that humanity couldn't possibly build a toolbot right. Outer Limits, Valerie 23, and Mary 25, for example. Uh. I find that depressing. I think we'll probably have some failures, but I think Android designers will be smart enough to do a lot of testing before they're releasing their creations to the public and build in fail safes so that even if something goes wrong, the Android will shut down rather than cause harm. I think they should be <laughs> releasing their creations on the public. Finally, I question why person bots would be built. I could see reasons for transforming humans into person bots. Medical, life extension, even cosmetic, and I'd argue that doing so doesn't change their status as people. Other than that, I now feel like I have a chance at fucking them, maybe. <laughs> but why, aside from the challenge and being able to say I did it, would anyone build a new person bot from scratch? Okay, let's oh, uh, man. <laughs> let's, let's move the on. The pickup artist bot beat me to the punch again at the bar. <laughs> let's move on from that. Yay! Uh, Yay! Hey, hey, do, you guys, do you guys like very confusingly enumerated lists? Yes! Yes. yes. Okay, so we're going to move Two, on. Two, those are my favorite. One, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what makes a good Android story? Uh, this is based on my response on the FemBot central message board mm. to Androido's question about what factors are important to an Android. And listing a bunch of possibilities, I answered as follows. Uh, so we're starting with things that must be mostly true for a story to have maximum sexy Android story. And that's all hyphenated mm -hmm. <laughs> impact on me, sexy Android story. Uh, and will probably be true in any story like this that I write. Uh, take it away, Stug. Uh, number one, a gynoid is your property. That's gynoid. Gynoid. Yeah. Gynoid. Okay. Yeah. 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 A gynoid is your property. Well, someone's ha semicolon needn't be mine. As long as she's not autonomous, that's all I care about. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, a gynoid will do anything you want, although not necessarily without hesitation, reluctance, or miss. Oh, fuck. <laughs> no. Oh, no. oh, my spine. Oh, oh. yeah. You I'm done. At least the <laughs> You're done. That's just you know. that sentence sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, though without hesitation, reluctance, or misinterpretation. Three, a gynoid will always be loyal to its owner. Four, a gynoid is always beautiful. Uh, six, a gynoid can be controlled. Thirteen, a gynoid <laughs> can be turned <laughs> off. Uh, this, is, this is found to like balled up in a waste paper bin in Isaac Asimov's office. <laughs> like an alternate... These are the laws of robotics that didn't make the cut. It's also like listed the thirteen in... laws of hobotics in some uh... like alternate universe Fibonacci sequence. Uh, uh, now we're into a category <laughs> things interest. What things interesting? Yep. Okay, things interesting because of the above, but not otherwise. Number fifteen. A gynoid is usually not jealous of your independence or outside social contacts, yeah. like friends uh -huh. or late night parties, <laughs> right. yep. etc. Oh, <laughs> all the people that Linda. like you, the orgies that you go to. <laughs> well, I didn't think we're gonna play um, verbal jackass with uh, robot with robot science fiction sex. Well, that this was fifteen. The, that was fifteen, which means starting that to creep in the list here. <laughs> that was fifteen, which means that the next is obviously number twenty-five. Gynoids live to please. Uh, we're now in a new category, which is things that I think could contribute to the sexiness of a story if used well for that purpose. Eleven. If a gynoid does malfunction, it can be repaired to perfection. Twelve. If a gynoid dies, it could be replaced by a backup copy. Yeah, I think we missed Isfahan there. 
Uh, oh, 20. Sorry, it's fun. You can have two gynoids. Three's too many. A chicken in every pot and a dick in every gynoid. <laughs> you could go to three gynoids or just one. <laughs> have you ever been to three gynoids burgers? <laughs> <laughs> Don't recommend it. No. <laughs> Um, 22, a gynoid can be made to look like the girl you were always too shy to ask out. As, as an example. More, yeah, <laughs> these aren't reflective of my issues or anything, just. It's dog. Oh, is it my turn? I'm sorry, I've completely lost the. No, no it's, we're, it's, we're, it's dogs. dogs. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Um, all right, so. 27. Number 27, a gynoid is often dependent on you. Jesus Christ. Uh, mm -hmm. now, now we're on to things that I mostly just don't think about when reading or writing. <laughs> I guess this means not important, so good. Yeah. Let's get into this yeah. list. Here's some not important things. <laughs> Number five, a gynoid doesn't get old, keeping a young appearance. Number seven, a gynoid is a low-maintenance companion as far as flowers, etc. Oh, God. Well, <laughs> flowers and attention it doesn't need, but it may need other kinds of maintenance. I'd say this isn't important. Oh, boy. It's fine. A gynoid can't have babies. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's good. So that's, he that's wants good. he wants his autonomous tools to have baby. No, no, they it's can't. It's just that's not that important. Yeah. No, this yeah. is the stuff that oh, this is just this just isn't important. Just this is what's care. not important to him individually. Right. He's this baby extremely likable person. This is all filler, <laughs> and he'd like to go back to the other stuff so he can masturbate properly, please. Child agnostic hardcore. <laughs> Uh, nutshell. Oh, no. sorry. Playing with Tommy to keep him from meowing. Um, <laughs> uh, shit. Where's Number nine. Nutshell, I think I hear your cat calling you. <laughs> Save Tommy. us, Victor. Uh, a gynoid is seven. A gynoid is a low mm -hmm. maintenance mm -hmm. companion Number nine. as far as flowers, nine. et cetera. <laughs> Number nine. Nope. Oh, nine? <laughs> nine. Sorry. Okay. Nine, a gynoid probably won't have sexually transmitted diseases. <laughs> probably. Probably. Unimportant. Sorry. <laughs> Ten, a gynoid doesn't get sick. I'm the only sick person in this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Number 14, a gynoid can do anything in bed. Number 16, a gynoid's appearance can be altered to suit your whim. <laughs> Number 19, Gynoids are not very self-conscious or easily embarrassed about clothing choices or <clears throat> lack of clothing. Uh... <laughs> Number 23, a gynoid doesn't need to be asked out. First contact <laughs> is often by some kind of accident in the stories here. Just, good, good, you know what? I... Good job, Isfahan. We were all reading this in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and then it really feels like a second editorial comment. I'm not sure what you mean by this. You know, like Chobits, where he finds her in the garbage. <laughs> anyway, um, 26. Gynoids can serve. Thank you, works. <laughs> Thank you, Hanson. <laughs> Do I need to read it again? Yeah, keep going. Yeah, no, okay. 26 <laughs> gynoids can serve as maids. Hanson may have played, but that only saves us for like three seconds. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 29. Gynoids don't play mind games. <laughs> and then uh, just wrapping this off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, things, I would, things I wouldn't particularly expect or want to be so, or want to be so, even in a story. Uh, number 17, a guy knowing always is pleased with your performance in bed. <laughs> Number 18, oh. number 18, a gynoid is often so pleased she short circuits, <laughs> proving your sexual skills. <laughs> We've covered that, says my editor. Yeah. <laughs> a gynoid can assume any form that turns you on, some of which may be embarrassing, impractical, or even illegal. Oh my god. Oh. Go to oh. super jail. Oh. Go to a jail inside of jail. Oh, no. Go to solitary. I just mean that I pirated my my robot. <laughs> sure. Number twenty-eight. Wouldn't download a girlfriend. 
a gynoid usually behaves rationally and predictably. Okay, let's go to try this voice. Almost done. Almost done. Sorry, gynoids make the ultimate damsels in distress for some. This one confuses me. Why should one seek to rescue a machine? Uh, I just don't understand. Jesus Christ. Uh, and then finally, after point 30, we know we're going to point 24. Yeah. yeah. A gynoid always has a nice personality or no personality, but never a bitchy personality. As long as she's hot. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I've had a story idea or two involving a gynoid with a bitchy personality. I just don't think I could write bitchy. All right, F plus, what do you think you learned this fucking hour? <laughs> These people Ugh. suck. Actually, yeah, I think it's one guy, right? I think sucks. it's just one guy that sucks. Yeah, that yeah. makes me feel better. Yeah. Mm. yeah, this guy has some well, issues. Keep in mind, all the things at the end we hated is something someone else really liked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also learned, uh, oh shit, that the bot button should be going again. <laughs> oh no, that was the one. Uh, Look, looking here at the the, the uh, recent donations, uh, Kanye Sutra, ten dollars. Take that, Southern poverty. <laughs> audio, a hundred dollars. Thank you so much. And he says this costs less than the gates of Hades, and still makes me feel creepy. What a deal! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, thank you so much to uh, to every donator uh, who has donated thus far. Pure eleven audio. I do believe you are guaranteed a new fetish coming to you in the mail. <laughs> Yeah, and you'll be joining a uh, ten pound twink from hour one. Ten pound <laughs> twink. He donated a hundred dollars for an erotic massage. <laughs> that sounds erotic. Uh, Two dollars and thirty five cents from Luckna, who says, "Vor me, please, God." <laughs> <laughs> like specifically, God. I don't. Yeah, I don't know how exactly where the comma goes there. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, thanks so much uh, to all of our donors. This is the end of our number two. Um, we have got uh, some donations incentives that'll be coming up um, in the uh, upcoming hours. I believe nutshell, you're make your your cooking things. Is that right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> gingerbread or brown sugar fudge. Okay, that's a lovely handmade card. Excellent. Uh, so those are coming up uh, in the future. Again, please do keep the donations coming. Garbage.live uh, is the place to do that. Uh, and uh, we kind of closed a little bit earlier than I meant to. <laughs> before before we go, there is something yeah, that, that, that I did point out while yeah. we were on the break. Um, yeah. So I didn't realize I did this as I was doing these, but uh, I actually saved these at 300 DPI. Hell yeah. Uh, which awesome. means... Which means they can be printed. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, go for it. <laughs> so I don't know what we're going to do with that information, but obviously okay. something's going to come with that. Uh, yeah. Once yeah. you figure out how to extract Wall it off of a Windows XP virtual machine. Yeah, once you figure out how to extract it. <laughs> hey, I have a folder set up. Cortex, <laughs> get, uh, <laughs> get back to me on what dimensions it would end up being, uh, and uh, we will uh, offer both of these uh, drawings as a uh, offer, the, offer both of these prints as a donation incentive uh, in the future. Uh, nice. Yes. In addition to the, um, where? Oh, oh, boots. Uh, tell us about the music. Tell us about the break. The break time music. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, Jimmy Franks uh, uh, said he had some. Uh, he sent me a picture of a bunch of like pro Canadian production music records from the 1970s, and he was like, "You want me to rip these?" I'm like, "Fuck yeah!" <laughs> and so he, he sent them to me a few days ago, and God, they're amazing. It's just like some, <laughs> some just just. Yeah, it, uh, somebody uh, tweeted so like me. Television production music. Uh, uh, someone named Heather tweeted me. He said current intermission music makes me feel like I'm shopping at Zellers in the mid '90s. And Zellers, <laughs> Zellers is a, a Canadian. Uh, <laughs> Hello, friends. Uh, shopping store. Hey, Jimmy Franks. Hi, Jimmy Franks. <laughs> uh, boots. Couple of things, real quick. Yeah. Uh, number one, I'm sorry I broke your server. Oh, uh, <laughs> was that you? I won't do it again. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was uploading some images. Uh, okay. I wanted to <laughs> That's fine. add some stuff to the hopper. And then uh, the other thing is, is there, if, uh, if, is it possible at all to change the variable on the rotation speed? Why are we doing this while we're live? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so coming up in, in the... Oh, uh, you guys are in break. Coming up, <laughs> <laughs> coming up in the upcoming hour... 
uh, coming up in the upcoming hour, uh, uh, Boots is going on break. Uh, I'll be here, uh, as well as Isfahan, Jimmy Franks, <laughs> when you're allowed to come back. Uh, Kumquats up. Uh, Portex is moving out of the art hole and into the recording hole. Uh, and our artist uh, for the next hour will be Trav. Uh, and we managed to make it close enough to our break time. So we're going to be going on break. Uh, take five minutes, stretch your legs, uh, get something to eat. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we'll talk to you real soon. <laughs> See okay. you later. <laughs>